Good evening, everyone. So, I'm doing a short, well, nothing I ever do is really short, but um, I am doing a video on my three primary, <sighs> oh, excuse me, three primary workhorse spinning outfits. Now, recently, my uh, hellbent, uh, Number eight hellbent medium light seven foot uh, got destroyed by a kid not paying attention to where he was running on the shoreline. Uh, absolutely cracked it right in half. I took a carbon fiber dowel from a RC hobby store and unfortunately even super glue it was a lost cause and and it was strong it just wouldn't take any kind of pressure strong or not. Uh, once carbon fiber and fiberglass are, are popped right in half, uh, those striations along the core that's wrapped, they fray at the end. So they have a tendency to separate no matter how well you super glue them. Uh, so it was just a, a done deal at that point, and I threw it in the trash. And it sucked. If I had taken the time to unglue uh, stuff like the handles, I probably could have gotten a blank and made one myself. It would have been very rudimentary, but I figured you can go on eBay all, all day long and get fairly cheap uh, replacements, which will bring me to the last of my outfits. Now, I've already done a review of a couple uh, kinds on my Mela 2 uh, Cast King Reel and my custom handmade Ron Weber uh, Southwest Custom Rods uh, rod, which to this day it's the best ultralight I've ever used and that's based on a Bushido blank um, so to give an update the rod has done very well the backbone on this thing for as skinny as it is is really uh, phenomenal I've pulled in uh, up to 12 pound um, channel cats on this with no issue <sighs> excuse me it has a great handling capacity. It has a really uh, whippy, um, moderate fast tip. And it has a really good parabolic to it. Really good. But you'll notice all the backbone. A lot of it. Okay. It's a great blink. Uh, it goes down to micro guides from... I have to be careful because of the way that this house is set up to the uh, air guides, if you can see that, where they spiral in. That's my first guide and the rest are micros. Um, it lends itself to casting way the hell out. And, um, you know, it's gotten some blemishes from being tossed on the ground. I tried to treat this rod really well. Uh, you know, this was handcrafted for me by a very exceptional human being who takes great care in everything he does. Now, I've noticed with all rods, even customs, that the uh, posts that the eyelets come in in ultralights, they always have some flex. But you can tell a really good one when it's wrapped to the point where it almost doesn't move at all, relatively little. These things don't move for nothing compared to regular ones. Testimony to the way that uh, Ron wraps his uh, thread and he, and he uh, enamels, he epoxies them on. It really is a phenomenal rod. This blank is just ridiculous. And I actually really, at first I was kind of opposed to having all these advertisement-y type things on here. But I actually really like kind of the uh, effect that it gives. Uh, it lets people know, hey, this is not your average rod. I love cork. I love the fighting butt. Although, even though I wanted one, I really would have, uh, in hindsight, I would have asked for it to have been uh, the same circumference as the rest of it. Only because I do a lot of bait fishing with bobber, and I can't slip it into a typical uh, rod holder. I just, I can't. I'd have to make a PVC one. But it lends itself really good to big fish fighting. So, that's good. The Mela 2 
has been tremendous. Uh, I'm not a fan of how the shroud is only because it's it's kind of gappy under here and the line can't get caught under there. And it is on the, uh, again, i got to be careful with this. Uh, it is on the front face too where the uh, adjuster knob is. Right in between those things is gappy and I've gotten it caught under there as well. So when I cast, i got to make sure that the line is falling off the right way. This has brand new line on it. Uh, I get master spools of line these days. This was a master spool of uh, AN40 silver thread in four pound. Uh, it's pretty much the only mono. I try to try to use only mono for four pound. I think after that master spool, I'll probably switch to fluoro as well. The reason I primarily use fluoro with my lighter work is because I want my bait to get down quickly and I use slip bobbers. Now, the reason I prefer fluorocarbon with slip bobbers is because it slips through quick. So, no matter what weight you have on your slip bobber, it's, it's done, it's down. Uh, mono has a tendency to be more buoyant and it doesn't flow through the guide of the uh, slip bobber nearly as well. I've noticed. Kind of unfortunate that it's that way, but it's that way. So, I also have a really big aversion to uh, two-piece rods. I hate them. Uh, I know they pack better for travel. I don't give a shit. I hate two-piece rods. So if I carry my rods into another state, I'm going to have a uh, really nice big carrier like my dad has. It's telescoping. It's like a quarter inch thick. It has padlock attachments. It's, it's pretty brutal, and if you put foam in there, your rods aren't going to be messed with on the plane. So, that's my ultra, ultra light. And if I get back to Washington for my friend David, if I can afford to at some point in time, before we both fucking die, um, I will be taking this as my primary uh, crappie and, and uh, smallmouth and walleye rod. It, it really has great backbone and great flex. It is a workhorse. And it's finessey as hell. I love it. Um, oh, another thing about that particular one. That rod preloads really well on a cast. And you can still have all the accuracy in the world. If you want a rod that encompasses every single thing you can think of in a rod, contact Ron Weber at Southwest Custom Rods. Even if you're in a state all the way across the the country from Arizona, he's worth going to. I know that there's custom rod makers all over the country, but let me tell you something. His customer service is kick-ass. Uh, the tip came off, and it just happened to be because of the way that the, the epoxy didn't set right. Well, I understand stuff like that happens. It happens. It's the way that life works. So I asked him advice on how to fix it, I said, do you want me to come out to you, or can I fix it on my own? He said, if you're comfortable fixing it on your own, fix it on your own. And if it doesn't work, bring it back. The, the blank has a lifetime warranty, no matter how uh, things happen, unless it's from abuse, of course. All of his work, he lifetime guarantees. So, I was not uncomfortable with fixing it. Uh, I keep a um, 0.7, I think, ounce... A container of Gorilla Super Glue, Gorilla brand, because it's the best super glue I've ever fucking used in my life. And uh, I put it on, aligned it right, I left it for five minutes, good as gold. Have not had an issue with this thing since. Haven't had any finish come off of it, any epoxy, any thread, nothing. And I've put it through its paces, believe me, I've put it through a lot of shit since I've gotten it. Uh, it's pulled out every type of beast I go for. And it's got such a flex to it and, it, and the moderate fast, that even when I set it against something, like it's been sitting to the side of me now since I put it down, right? It's still doing this. That's how sensitive it is. It is a phenomenal rod. If you have any kind of inclination for any type of fishing, and you know what you don't like in a rod and what you like and you only want what you want. He will make it happen, okay? I could have made it as frilly and 
cutesy and whatever type of designs and all that shit. I told him I only want a no frills. I don't need anything shiny on it. I like cork. I like a split grip or a full length grip. I like a longer grip. I want it to downlock. Now, when I first started using it, uh, the downlock really bothered me. But since I wanted to have the ability to change my grip, it was kind of a must. The bounce point's a little bit different because of the downlock, but it doesn't take away from the way that the rod fishes, which is phenomenal. I do think I'm going to find a way on this where it has uh, the whole bear seat. I'm going to try to find a way to, because uh, I won't take this, this reel off unless I have to maintain it. I'm going to see if I can find some type of um, smaller gauge foam like they use for uh, pool noodles and cut it and just kind of uh, have it on there somehow, maybe uh, a couple small strips of electrical tape or something. Just because this is kind of hard on the hands. It's very sensitive though, so I don't know that I really would do that. It's just really super sensitive. And you can see how I'm holding it right here. I don't like being way back like this on a reel. But there's some instances where that presentation is necessary so you can feel that. When I shake this, I feel the tip all the way through my forearm. I don't feel my fingers. My fingers are dead. I have no, no feeling in them. So I have to feel through my forearm. The vibration goes all the way through this blank and all the way through to my forearm and I feel it. It really is. I, I cannot physically say enough about Ron Weber's rod work. I mean, it's sitting here going right now. That's how sensitive this thing is. The Bushido blank itself is badass, but he can do all sorts of different blanks and guides and whatnot. Uh, he honored me with the fact that he had gotten some special buys of some brand new uh, materials, including the, the blank. It was a new series. Uh, the eyelets are new. The real seed is made locally. I mean, it's a great setup. So that's Ron, the Ron Weber. Uh, I call it the uh, the pan sassin. It's my primarily my panfish rod, so I call it pan sassin. Then eBay specials. I got an Okuma Cecilio or Cecilo or however Cecilo. Uh, this is a light seven foot two piece. I know I hate two pieces, but it was 20 bucks on eBay and I got it. Uh, it is a CES 702L-1. Uh, seven foot, line weight's four to ten, lower weight is an eighth to three quarter, but it is noted as a light. Again, it is a thin blank and it has, again, a good parabolic bend, but it's stiffer. It's definitely a light, not an ultralight. It has more of a bend further down the line. You can see that right there. But it has a uh, really strong uh, backbone to it for what it is. The guides are the traditional style. You'll notice as more flex. You can actually hear it in the wrap. They won't come out though, so I'm not really concerned. I've considered putting a couple uh, drops of Gorilla Glint in each of these because they kind of make sound. Uh, it's held up over time though. And then my favorite uh, spinning rod I've ever had so far in my life is this Daiwa Revros. This is a 2000 size. It, it's actually dirty as fuck, too. God dang, this thing's dirty. Um, this is now my light to medium light uh, region of rod and reel. Most of what I do is in the 7 foot range. It's just a comfortable length for me. I like the leverage factor. This reel's drag is bomb. Good God, I've never had a better, smoother drag of any reel in my life. If it wasn't for the fact that I had brand new lines spooled on it, I would turn it for you so you could hear how easily it is. It just, man. And 
there's very, very little, very little gap, and it's recessed in the front of this one. I don't like rear drag reels. They're uh, not nearly as strong, in my opinion, but it's super butter smooth. It casts like a bullet. It sits really nice on this rod. I have, um, I think, let's see, what does it say for line? So, I have six pound on this, and I have about 120 yards. 135 is the max in six pound that can go on this, and I have about 120 yards. Um, I could put braid on. I've actually seen people put two to four pound braid, which is really super stringy, uh, and it has the same average strength as four to six pounds above it. Uh, and you could put a couple hundred yards of it on one of these. I don't think so. But this reel is stupendous, and it works really good with this rod. Uh, it's not anywhere near the class of the, Re the Weber. It uh, also has a fair amount of sensitivity bounce to it. Again, it's not on the same level as the Weber one. Then we get to my medium. Now, I got to preface this again. Before, the reel that's on the rod I'm about to show you was on a Ducat Terex 7 foot medium heavy. No, excuse me, not medium heavy, heavy. Uh, that was my workhorse, workhorse rod. That was my throwing big baits for bass on a spinning outfit or putting live bait of a big nature on for bass in a spinning outfit. It worked wonderfully. I kept it with a uh, 12 pound um, FC sniper from Sunline. Uh, I love Sunline. I love Sunline with a passion. It's a great line. But, um, now what I have is a brand called Master Custom Rods. There's some versions of them that are really popularly sold at, at Walmart, believe it or not. Master Custom Rods actually makes a lot of the their higher end versions for other companies. And not unlike um, not unlike Okuma, um, Daiwa Shimano, um, who else? There's another one. Well, I can't think of it off the top of my head, but uh, they have really, really good reels uh, and rods. Anyway, my Workhorse 2500 is a Pin Fierce 2. Now, the reason I have this as my primary Workhorse reel is that for its size, it's heavy as hell. It is saltwater rated, it's sealed bearings, uh, the funny thing is, the drag on my Mela 2 in a 2000 size has like 4 pounds more drag uh, rating than this. But this one's drag is stronger for its rating. Uh, it doesn't fade out nearly as much during a fight. The adjustment is just really tight. It is a free spinning spirited reel. It has a massive handle. You can see the, the shad sparklies all over my handle because so I use a lot of light bait. I really don't give a shit. I'll probably clean it at some time. But it, you know, it flows alright. I would like to put a power, ha power handle on it. I probably will in, in the future. Uh, I just haven't popped the cap to see how this one's attached. I'd probably like to uh, put one of those like 48 millimeter jobs on there. They're not that expensive. I now have Eight pound uh, Izor Triple X copolymer, uh, extra soft, extra strong, extra limp. It's a copolymer monofilament, which means that it's two different polymers put together in a mono pattern. And it's a really good workhorse line. I like using uh, the lightest line I can for an application, unless I know the brutality involved is going to be way more. And that's why I stick with 8 pound on my 2500, because most of the stuff I do I can handle that with a fight. This master rod, if 
you look close, you can see it's not a high quality rod, okay? For what it is, oh, it's awesome. But you can see this hermetic uh, sonic welding that's going on here and how cheaply this is made. But this is a get to it and do it rod for me. It has a great long handle. It's all that like super hard springy uh, neoprene foam. It's a no frills. It's really thick. And now it says that it is four to 10 pound line rated, seven foot. It is a two piece again, I hate two pieces. Uh, one eighth through three eighth. But they're conservative with calling this a medium light. It's not a medium light. Look how thick this thing is all the way through. And now, look at the bend. See that? How straight this whole backbone is? It's all in the tip. This is all day long, at least a medium. It's very, very conservatively rated. It is very springy. See the vibration in that? Very springy rod. And there's not a lot of give to the tip. It's a very fast tip. So this will be my uh, live bait uh, big slip bobber rig for catfish and bass with uh, pretty much anything I can throw that will swim on the end of a hook. Uh, I use a lot of bluegill, a lot of shad. Uh, I even use baby tilapia. So this rod will serve that purpose. You'll notice that it's that cheap gold plate. Can't really see it with the light. You can see the amount of flex, but these, for being cheaper wraps, are really good. Um, it's a bit heavy for a rod, but I really don't mind. It's one of those ones that I'm gonna sit back in my chair and just kinda hold it like this, which I typically do until I see my bobber go down, and then I reel and hit, I hit it usually. Uh, it'll work. It was only 18 bucks on eBay, shipped, and I didn't have 50 to 60 bucks laying around to get something equivalent or anywhere near equivalent to the Hellbent that I had. I paid 60 bucks for the Hellbent I had. I just don't have the money for it right now. I will probably end up getting another Hellbent from number eight same length, same amount of pieces, um, which is one, because I love that medium light rod. It is a beautiful rod for being mass produced. Um, or I may just get another Ron Weber. I, I may get another Southwest Customs in a medium with a fast action. Uh, and probably all micro guide. It will not be down locked this time. Uh, long handle, full cork. I don't think I'd do split grip. Uh, I'm comfortable with full grip. I like split, split grip in some applications, not all of them. The Terex Heavy that I had uh, with split grip was great in split grip. But I think that I'm probably going to stick with these. Uh, cheaper rods for a while before I get another Weber. I, I have the one uh, really nice uh, one that I've talked about that has the Mela 2 on it. I will probably get a Daiwa Revros in a 2000 size or maybe even smaller for this ultralight because uh, it really is meant for ultra ultralight work. Um, I also can tell you that my 7 foot 11 inch uh, bait cast swim bait rod from uh, Okuma, which is an Okuma Guide Select, uh, is a triple X heavy fast action. And um, I have an Aura Winch from Abu Garcia low profile on it. I have spun a gear in it. Uh, it only cost me 85 bucks shipped. I'm not really going to lose sleep over it. I'll probably sell it for like 10 bucks. Say, hey, somebody fixed the gear. Um, probably, probably put on offer up. It's a 300 size reel. Uh, 
Actually, I think it's a 200 size. It's a 200 size reel. Um, I will probably get an Revo winch in a 300 size or another loose speed spool uh, round reel, but in a 300 size instead of a 600. My bigger uh, musky rod for catfish, I have the 600 on it. It's great. It's the drag is phenomenal on that reel. Uh, in the 300 size, it probably serve me well. I really don't want to spend the money on like the uh, you know ultra high end Shimano's or Daiwa's and the round rails. I just don't see the need to do that. Um, I try to keep things economical. The most I've paid for a reel in the last four years was three years ago when I got my Cronarch from Shimano when the X ship uh, style first came out and I paid 240 uh, for it but I ordered it was 210 and I ordered it with brass gears important distinction you, you could at that time I don't think they allow it anymore actually you can buy aftermarket brass gears they last a lot longer and that little profile reel in 7 to 1 is a bullet caster I can put an 8,000 jig on it all day long and cast it 50 yards and not even think about it uh, I would love for them to. I would love to have one of those in a 300, but I throw a lot of swim baits with those two rods, and I also throw a lot of really super big live bait. But I prefer live bait on a bobber with spinning reels uh, and rods. I don't know why that is. I think it's just easier to just pop the bail and toss it out. Uh, important point to note: do not turn the handle. To close the bail. It's not why spinning reels are designed that way. They're designed for it to open, you throw it, you close it by hand, and then you take action. You strip the mechanism out if you do that all the time. I've learned it the hard way, and uh, I had a Mitchell 300 original green, which is almost impossible to find now, and I rendered it utterly useless and in, had no value whatsoever from doing that. As well as they were made back then, it, I toasted it. So don't. Do yourself a favor. Toss, close the bail. Don't flip it with the fucking reel. Don't flip it with the handle. Don't. Always flip it by hand. Not to mention the fact when you flip it by hand, it forces you to check your line. Ha ha! Yeah.